And I'm excited for our next guest because Julia and or Julia Balaz, I have been following her work for a couple of years and I wanted her on Portal to Ascension about a year ago, but we it couldn't, didn't work at that point. And now is a moment in time where she's ready to come on Portal to Ascension. So it's her debut here and her information is incredible. And people have been telling me for a couple of years, I get, you know, random emails where people suggesting people to have on Portal to Ascension. She's actually the number one person that people have suggested. Really? Um, wow. Know. That is yeah, so amazing. So, yeah. So I'm excited to have her on. So you want to do the official bio? Well, I mean, she, if you want to, it's fine. I just know that she does galactic astrology and she's a researcher and she does a lot of QA, QHHT, which you had mentioned um, Dolores Cannon earlier. So she follows a lot of Dolores Cannon's teachings and she has an insatiable curiosity about personal alchemy. And she has been doing this since her early teens and making incredible breakthroughs for people. And um, I, it seems like, like people have had such incredible experiences with her and her work is definitely really helping people to come into anatomy and advanced anatomy healing and soul realignment. She's using very unique techniques in addition to all of her teachings that she's everything she's learned from Dolores Canyon. So I think it's a beautiful combination. I'm really excited to hear from her and to learn more. Do you want to read her bio? Her no, official yeah. bio? no, no, that, that was perfect, Lori. Oh, okay. Hey, Julia. Hey, Julia. Welcome. Hi, guys. So wonderful to be here with you. Such high vibes uh, on this summit. And I'm so grateful to be introduced to, to so many legends and rock stars. Wow, <laughs> you guys are doing brilliant work, uh, work. And thank you so much for this beautiful introduction, too. Just to clarify, I am no longer doing the QHHD sessions um, or, the, or the soul realignment sessions. I spent seven years full time doing that. And while I was facilitating uh, these amazing personal transformations and observed the incredible stories of so many individuals. I, after their sessions, look at their astrological birth charts and looked for some validation about the higher self connection that was coming through their sessions and also about the extraterrestrial connections that were coming mm -hmm. through so often. And I just continue to fall deeply and more deeper and deeper in love with the with the brilliance of the universal design and seeing that there is order in chaos and just the magnificence of synchronicities. And then when you see them in astrological placements, it's just like you're looking at the behind the curtain of creator, seeing the divine plan unfolding in front of you. And there's just a lot of validation and clarity and activations that comes through uh, this work. So I'm deeply honored to share this information with the world and most of all um ever more so excited seeing the community the growing community of astrologers expanding their consciousness rapidly and really reaching for the stars and beyond mm -hmm. and seeing how much we are impacted by these celestial bodies and how they play their role uh, in our evolution of consciousness in the unfolding and actually in the presentation that I'll have today I'll share information about the upcoming energies that are actually really powerfully impacting this summit like it's such a divine timing for what you guys are doing here so I look forward to hearing more about that yes awesome okay. well, we're so excited to hear from you yes, this is yes, yes. Be so great what a treat and you're gonna you do a PowerPoint right screen share yes will I do that now yeah, go for it. And I'm, I'm so excited to hear what the energies are that are supporting this, because that seems to be a theme. We create an event and then we find out the day after something was happening. And yeah. I, an example I gave, we did a Palladians conference and then we found out a week later that the day we did the Palladian conference was when we were, Earth was aligned with the central star of the Pleiades. Of you know, course. You can, you can make this stuff up. Yes. So much magic. Okay. All right, one second, almost there. Okay, I see it. Okay, go ahead and go to the PowerPoint. And then when you when you screen share your PowerPoint, click the hide button on the screen mm -hmm. share so we don't see that. Okay. Take All right. it away. Uh, thank you. I'm only seeing this presentation, so in case something goes off, you need to let me know um, by, it. by speaking. All right. We'll so. I am starting this presentation with this amazing art uh, created by Jean-Luc Buzzoli, 
which I feel represents perfectly the perspective that I've witnessed over and over and over again as I held space for people either regressing through their past lives, parallel lives, whatever you want to call it, connecting with the galactic um, soul family. There's just so much in this universe and um, people who deeply feel the connection to this art, to the representation of, of the worlds and our cosmic family are usually people who at least once in their life experienced conscious um, shift to either theta or alpha or gamma um, brainwave state. It happens naturally every single day to us or night when we are drifting into a dream state or when we are awakening. We go through all these brainwave states, but consciously going through or being uh, experiencing theta brainwave or gamma brainwave state when we are suddenly able to perceive past, present and future at the same time, when we're able to perceive world and reality from multiple perspectives, not just from your own perspective, but also beings that um, are next to you. And not only on the earthly plane, but also the higher self, the angels, the spirit guides and um, really all that is it. It you know, we are our brains are so wonderfully designed that we are able to to perceive different um, realms of creation at different times. And also wonderful to have the better brainwave state, our natural everyday kind of analytical, logical state of being that allows us to be seemingly disconnected and, um, and only focus on the here and now and get on with our current identity, current reality, building what we are, what we came here to build. If we were always remembering and perceiving all that is at all times, first of all, it would be ex quite overwhelming for our bodies. Um, and it would be really hard to focus on all, all uh, you know, on just one uh, project, one lifetime um, purpose. So, you know, perfect divine design. And uh, there is uh, actually, if people will stay with us till the end of this presentation, I am including uh, free access to a simple to follow higher self connection course where I include breathing techniques and um, meditation techniques to help people shift into these other states of consciousness so that they can start exploring um, their own deeper connections to other star systems or explore their ancestral history from uh, earthly planes and really just um, get to know themselves better uh, because really once we know ourselves uh, we understand our unique uh, imprint our path we can shine that amazing uh, light of creator uh, consciousness on this planet and make this a world somehow a better place in our own unique way so I uh, wanted to define uh, the information about how macrocosm is reflected in the microcosm, how our universe is holographic and how every single one of us is a unique fractal, yet a complete hologram of the whole. And based on what brainwave state we are in, we are either perceiving ourselves as that unique fractal, feeling that separation from all that is through our ego's filter, or we can know ourselves experientially as a complete hologram of the whole if we expand our consciousness through theta and gamma brainwaves. And our DNA stores the full story of creation, including the memories of our ancestors, not only on Earth, but also the sky. And I've witnessed this over and over again uh, as I held space for people who regressed spontaneously to remember their um, ancestors from stars. So galactic astrology, I find, is such an amazing tool that can help us understand which behavioral patterns anchored in ancestral trauma are, are we here to resolve. I really wholeheartedly believe that we are here at this time um, of, of human history to, to consciously access um, previous trauma not that was not imposed on us only on Earth, but in other star systems and bring the light 
respect and love of our oversoul into the physical human DNA and create powerful ripple effect of healing and integration and greater connectivity that upgrades and ascends not only the human collective on Earth, but creates a ripple effect across the universe. Um, so with the galactic astrology, we can look at what is our own unique way of how we can help with this collective mission. And uh, we can also gain so much guidance to looking at the celestial archetypes that are helping us to evolve. And we all have our unique uh, codes that um, help us work with these celestial ar archetypes. And it's quite amaz amazing to see how our collective uh, consciousness is expanding rapidly. The astrology community is uh, not only looking at the planets within our solar systems as the archetypes, but now also the newly um, discovered dwarf planets, asteroids, and the stars and the super cosmic points. Like there's just no end to how far we can go. Um, and it's all through quantum entanglement. We are connected to all that is through that shift of um, brainwave state. Uh, we can consciously experience that. So there are these three main perspectives that I'm noticing um, with people that come to me at different states of their consciousness. They can, it for, for some people, it's easiest to understand the, the connection to these um, complex energetics within their being as something that laid dormant within their DNA, physical human body DNA, and that's why they're accessing uh, what others would call past lives, people who believe in reincarnation. There are still so many who don't. Um, and I look forward for, for that to be uh, kind of mainstream accepted uh, topic. But even if not, we can allow the perspective of the cosmic ocean where everything is interconnected and we actually don't own any of the stories of our previous or future incarnations, it all belongs to the greater cosmic um, pool, the database of all that is. And we are kind of just uh, borrowing or, or allowing things to express and exp uh, through us, through our individual being. So all these three perspectives I believe are true and valid and just different people. Um, it helps different people at different time of their path to. Um, to kind of gain an, a deeper understanding of what we are talking about here. So as I was uh, developing my deeper under, deeper understanding of, of how powerful astrology can be and how much it can help us on this path of awakening and conscious integration of our uh, celestial origins and heritage, at one point we I was um, supported in creating a software uh, that helps us calculate uh, cosmic align and alignments in a matter of seconds. So if people go to galacticastrochart.com website and go to free reports, then click on the tab there, enter their birth details and click on generate birth data. Then you have a few options of either seeing very simple placements or um, more complex charts. Uh, you click on generate extended report and then you will see something that looks like this. This is person A, person B. And I just wanted to demonstrate how um, if you start exploring your immediate family members, maybe your friends <laughs> with this website, you will see that some people have a lot of stars. Their charts are packed with cosmic energies like here and other people don't have as many and that's quite okay. And I just want to um, uh, mention here that the, the software that we're using has only about 60 stars there for now, uh, and more stars av are available for the advanced users who uh, choose to do this professionally as uh, galactic astrology soul reading practitioners. They get login access and they can explore so much more, but um, kind of just to let everyone know that you know, there, there's just so much there and every placement means something. I would love for people to uh, pay attention to the house column and these numbers here represent different life areas. So if you are familiar with any of the star systems, for example, uh, Pleiades um, are quite commonly known or Arcturus, then you can see which house, um, the astrological house, the the star system is placed in and it's very likely that 
that's the life area where you can channel that galactic frequency the easiest, especially through conjunct placements. All right, and then there are trine sextile squares, different um, kind of mathematics and geometrical um, configurations. And uh, actually on the website, if you click on more info, there is a basic explanation of what things mean. If you want to go deeper, you can go to and take the course uh, that is quite uh, comprehensive. It's quite a journey to go through it. Or if you don't have time for it or you're not a kind of left brain, analytical, logical type of person, you can um, go to the practitioner page where we have, I think, over 70 practitioners now offering the delineation, explanation of your galactic placements in 20 different languages. So I'm just super excited how quickly this grew and how much passion and excitement is shared within the community. Um, and I have to say this whole um, modality is evolving so rapidly. There is so much growth and I'm noticing it as a group phenomenon. Whenever you have uh, you know, growing group of people studying together, the solutions, um, to problems or 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 the evolutionary process is rapid. It's it all happens so fast because of that collective mind, that collective energy pull. Um, so it's quite a gift, and it's very humbling for me to be part of a collective that is just advancing so fast. Anyway, here I wanted to also highlight that you don't another option that how you can use our software is to look at current transits. Where are the, what type of energies are currently being anchored by the planets in our solar system? Um, so you can kind of forget your own natal chart, the energetics there, and you can just choose to invite the energies that are currently um, aligned to the planets. So for example, on the upcoming full moon, Aries full moon on October 17th, I think that'll be the second last day of this summit. We will have the wonderful Arcturus in perfect alignment with the sun. And next to Arcturus, sharing very similar degrees, is another a very spiritual star called Spica in Virgo constellation. So, you know, every year around this time when we have sun, in Libra, around 24 degrees, I'm speaking tropical zodiac sign, we have this powerful influx of Arcturian frequencies helping us to heal on an emotional level, um, expand spiritually, advanced, um, techno advanced technologically. There's such a, such a powerful spiritual guidance that comes from Arcturus. But what I find really interesting with this um, full moon is that our something called collective lunar nodes, kind of the evolutionary collective consciousness path, the south node um, in Libra, south node talks about where we came from, and then the north node in Aries, where we are heading, what where we are pulled by the archetypes of, of the zodiac. So on this full moon, the south node is conjunct supergalactic center, and it is also conjunct the asteroid Atlantis. And I, I just think it's so fitting because it feels the, the energetics throughout the summit feel very Atlantean, like there is this connection uh, to the memories of the past civilization uh, where so many worked on um, developing spiritually emotionally, mentally, physically. There was so much wisdom held in Atlantis. There was such rapid advancement and evolution, but also at the same time, there was a growth of the shadow side of the ego. And um, we are experiencing the echo of that. Throughout this year, 2024, the asteroid Atlantis was hitting um, very particular placements uh, through our planets in the solar system during the important uh, times during eclipses and, and full moons. So it uh, it feels like this Atlantean energetics is very, very potent. And I actually have made a couple of videos on that, I collaborated with a few individuals. If people go to my YouTube channel, Galactic Astrology, and just search for Atlantis, um, you can see the past um, uh, transits 
in year 2024 so you can kind of reflect back especially if atlantean theme is quite potent for you you can see where you may be on some other group retreat where you were working on healing your Atlantean traumas and um, integrating the wisdom of everything you've learned and, and, and expressed there. You know, there's a lot of that in the collective. And I feel like this summit is um, such a powerful um, reawakening of, of these energetics where we come together as one, the, not in the kind of hierarchy type of model of uh, one leader uh, and then everyone else um, is everyone else's light is diminished it's not that's not what we uh, want anymore so here there is a there is a catch here with with this placement because we have mercury during the uh, aries full moon in scorpio conjunct chaplet attractor it's a very powerful energy where our mind the mercury will want to really dig deep to the core of the, the essence of truth of, of our lives. What is the driving force uh, that, that moves us through our um, human life experience? And we will want that to be known. There'll be a lot of um, you know, hardcore truths that will be revealed in the collective. A lot of information will be shared. Uh, and that's kind of the whole the theme of the entire year with Jupiter in Gemini. Uh, conjunct the stars of Orion. The Orion themes are also very, very potent throughout this year. So a lot of that information will be coming up. And the aspect that is formed between Mercury and um, South Node is uh, semi sextiles. It's 30 degrees apart. It's, it's tough energy. It's not compatible. And what it means, how it shows up, um, usually on a very unconscious level, it's like this itch you cannot scratch you're not aware what is the nagging feeling that's inside you and but here thanks to galactic astrology we can um we can um, get a conscious understanding of what will be occurring in the next week or two we will be uh influenced by the atlantean collective karmic imprints inside our being the past behavioral patterns of us kind of wanting to be diplomatic, have harmony and balance, but in the shadow side of Libra to the point of uh, we'll become kind of aware of our patterns of self-sabotage where we want to keep balance and harmony, but to the detriment of our own identity, our own well-being. You know, there's been a lot of um, awareness, a lot of talks about how how we are overgiving, how we um, celebrate almost the, the the martyrdom that so many religious taught us a long, long time to to suffer, and that that is a way to be. So these themes will be coming up quite strongly throughout this time, and the North Node where we are heading, Aries, opposing supergalactic center, once. Uh, is also helping us becoming aware of the passion that is arising inside us to become um, leaders in our own life, to follow the excitement. And uh, again, because these are early degrees, degrees of Libra and Aries, it's the kind of the shadow side uh, expressions that may be coming up as a result of the Atlantean karmic um, patterns that need to come out to surface thanks to Mercury Scorpio and um, Shapley Attractor and um, we can thank the beautiful alignment of the Arcturus here in high degrees of Libra through Sun helping us to 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 express the diplomatic side the bringing balance and harmony into our relationships in a way that doesn't sabotage our own well-being here we have moon in the high degrees of aries which helps us become compassionate leaders and understanding that what we choose we need to be also consciously aware of how our choices will impact the collective right so we have a lot of amazing guidance here that can help us um, restore the balance between what went wrong um, 12,000 years ago or 15,000 years ago. We, it's like we have a 
we, we are returning or we have the alpha and omega experience of the cycle spiraling into higher expression of our of our soul um so certainly on the 17th of october guys during the summit i invite everyone if you will have any meditations um, and for anyone who may have actually the asteroid atlantis significantly placed in their natal chart um, I'll, I'll come back to the slide you can go to another website called astro.com slash cgi gen chart generate chart you can copy this link into your browser then go to additional objects when you enter your birth details and look for asteroid atlantis number 1198 where is it in your natal chart and i promise you if you have it close to any of the planets it's very likely that you are you feel in deep resonance with atlantis whether in a positive or challenging way um, i've asked my community um, half a year ago when we when i was doing this presentation for my youtube channel about atlantis can they look in their natal charts and what are the stories that um, come through for them and everyone who had uh, conjunction or any aspect to natal planets to asteroid Atlantis they had uh, memories of Atlantis they and for some they were positive and for some they were really challenging for some they recalled misusing the the power misusing the wisdom uh, well the knowledge that they had and the skills they had and others they were manipulated by those who misused the the skills and technology and these things so there is a huge amount of variety of experiences in connection to atlantis that i feel is coming up a lot in the collective and um i'm grateful to see many uh, taking the the road of wisdom and love helping to kind of heal and integrate and upgrade kind of the collective so I, I would love for anyone to comment if if they are aware of their connection to atlantis you know what what is alive for them another fascinating thing that uh, galactic astrology can help with is recognizing when you have a significant dream or spontaneous recall download during a meditation or you go to these amazing spiritual retreats and suddenly you connect to these ancient memories um, in particular for me just after i did the recording with kelly coloni uh, i think that's her surname um channeling archangel Raphael. we talked about atlantis and that night i recalled what i believe was my last moments of atlantis this was kind of the this is the best visual i could um create with the ai of the view that i had as i was heading to a retreat um where I, that i was facilitating um talking about uh, relationships um mastery and the moment where before i saw this flash there was like a collective telepathic uh, message or knowing that this is the this is the end there was this atomic um, technology that exploded and within seconds it was gone but the experience I had was the experience of surrender and acceptance and as I recalled this dream I realized as I uh, reflected back on my life that anytime Atlantis was mentioned I didn't have those feelings that many others do whether it's fear of water because many drowned others had um, nightmares in regards to earthquakes and all kinds of horrific deaths where the survival um, mode was switched on, where they were fighting for their life. Others recalled being rescued by uh, spaceships. So there are so many different types of experiences. And the night when I recalled this dream, the asteroid Atlantis was uh, activated through transiting, transiting Moon and Neptune very precisely aspecting my natal um neptune and there are other uh, placements there they were like of course i recall so when you have significant experiences and then you know what to look for in in the astrology there is such a powerful validation and and clarity and guidance that can come through it um so you know it's i, I just love exploring these things um through astrology um i also wanted to mention sorry actually i was going to go back to this slide on the 27th of september when the hurricane helen hit uh 
not this chart. Uh, this chart is talking about the October 17th that I've mentioned already. But on the 27th of September, the Atlantis was at 28 degrees of Virgo, conjunct supergalactic center. It was opposing Neptune in Pisces. It was square Uranus in Taurus and Quincux Pluto in Capricorn. There was actually this powerful uh, kite um, configuration that I believe that a lot of the energetics of the drowning that occurred for many in Atlantis may have been played out for those that unfortunately were hit the east coast of USA uh, next to Atlantean Ocean. Is it possible that a lot of that trauma came up to be cleared and healed and integrated? And um, I have to say, I am deeply humbled and inspired by how much self-mastery has been demonstrated through so many individuals that were deeply affected by the Hurricane Helen and how much we are growing collectively uh, into self-mastery and to kind of collective mutual support um, in these uh, difficult times. So I just thought it was quite fascinating to see. I kind of only realized it as I was preparing this presentation. So perhaps those who are hearing this um, may need it to hear it. And maybe you can um, reflect and ponder some more about what the floodings meant to you personally or to those you loved. And can you go into meditation, into the heart um, of your soul to help resolving and dissolving whatever trauma you may have experienced um, in times of the fall of Atlantis? And how can we overcome that now and start bringing the highest frequency of wisdom and love of the Atlantean era to support our collective evolution? Um, so the, the energetics will continue to be quite potent. And especially then at the end of December, early January, the asteroid Atlantis will move into Scorpio and it will be conjunct Shapley Attractor, one of the greatest force in our known universe that helps everything to move in that spiraling motion of evolution. So I believe uh, there'll be even more revelations um, and prophetic experiences and miraculous experiences occurring on a collective level. So um, see where Asteroid Atlantis is in your natal chart and what it means uh, for you. And if you need help with delineating anything in your astrological chart, you can, as I said, um, call to our certified practitioners. I wanted to bring this slide in. I'll not actually go over it and through it. I just want people to take a screenshot <laughs> to help them uh, learn about different life areas rep represented by different astrological houses. So you can keep that in your phone handy. And then when you see the numbers in the Galactic Astrology Report, you can look at this image and see, okay, that's the area where my Arcturian connection is most alive. Can I become now consciously aware of it and channel it uh, for the greater good of all? And as an example, this is another uh, slide that I want you to take a screenshot of to explain the sextiles, trines, and squares, what they mean. And there is more information on the website. Um, and of course, you can go a lot deeper when you go through the courses. But everything uh, can lead to really important information about your galactic connections, your paths or parallel or future lives, however you want to perceive it. Um, there can be so much guidance to help you navigate the challenging relationships with uh, people from that have strong um, placements from with certain star, star systems. It's quite fascinating to see how our connections occur and how much magic and synchronicity is happening um, on um, on an individual and collective level. I wanted to include a slide with uh, this beautiful comparison of different stars in terms of size and color and density. Every single star has very unique frequency, just like us, just like human souls. Uh, we're all unique, uh, yet connected to all that is. And it is wonderful to see more and more people being guided to uh, journey within and connect to different star systems and then uh, allow very these unique frequencies to come through in support of our healing and evolution. It's beautiful to see. 
Um, so inside the courses or as well, if you just go to Galactic Astrology YouTube channel and of course online, there's plenty of uh, information about what it means to have certain stars in your natal chart, what type of frequency is coming through your unique being. And oftentimes there are many different stars. I believe you're all kind of multi-galactics at this point. Uh, our DNA is so complex. We are carrying codes of so many different lineages, not just on earth, but um, from stars too. And you know, you will never know it all. You will never fully understand the complexity of your being, but certainly during transits, um, these different star systems in your charts, a chart are being activated at different times. So it's great if you can connect with these energies consciously, you can really accelerate your um, manifesting abilities, your magnetic um, um, charismatic kind of the impact that you can have on the collective uh, most of all um, the, evolving towards greater inner peace I believe that's really what what we what is certainly wonderful to receive if you want to kind of counterbalance the insanity that is happening on so many levels in the world too a lot of suffering so um, as I said this is the page on the website that leads to certified practitioners, people who are dedicated their uh, time fully to galactic astrology. They're passionate about um, continuously evolving their own consciousness, learning more, and first, most of all, investing a lot of their time and energy into tuning in to people's natal charts, looking at their transits, and offering invaluable guidance on, um, on their evolutionary path. So super proud of every single individual here. So if you go to my website, either juliabalas.com or galacticastrology.com, you'll go to courses. And when you find the Higher Self Connection course on my website and go to the uh, payment section, and when you go to the checkout page and you type PTA, Portal to Ascension 100, so PTA 100 code, you will get a free access to the Higher Self Connection course. And um, I just find it's really important to, to understand the difference between our uh, kind of thoughts that are conditioned by um, trauma and the ego um, ideas of what's best for us and really deeply understanding and feeling the difference of the energetics when your soul, when your higher self, when the divine intelligence is guiding you and talking to you with that very subtle uh, expression. So in that higher self connection course, I created it as a result of me working with um, uh, close to 2000 individuals through QHHT sessions. And there was a lot of guidance coming for them individually from their own higher self on how to um, nurture the connection with the higher heart, with the divine aspect of our being that knows the way, that knows what is our path to highest love, highest wisdom. Um, so I would be absolutely honored if people uh, took time to go through this um, course and if they felt it helped them in some way. Um, so that's my gift to this community and to the summit. So I hope you guys will enjoy it. Um, how are we doing on time? And yeah, we're, how are we doing? We're doing, we're doing good. Uh, you have, uh, well, actually, you have one minute left. However, oh. this is the, um, the end of the day, so we don't need to stop immediately. Ah, oh, wonderful. We well, can, if we there are any questions, I would be happy to answer them. I'm not sure if this is interactive or not, but what did you think about the Atlantean uh, alignment, um, The how the asteroid is very potent right now at this time and in connection to the summit, uh, Neil? Yeah, I I felt that was very interesting that you were saying that, that basically the asteroid is bringing up Atlantean karmic, um, I guess, karma to be processed right now, right? Very much so, I was yes. Curious, so, I was curious what you meant by, like, in December 31st and January 1st, you said Atlantis ingress to Scorpio. I, I think I missed that. What does that mean yeah. exactly? 
Yeah, it means that it moves from high degrees of Libra and goes into early degrees of Scorpio. And early degrees of Scorpio is very potent placement because it is uh, conjunct the Shapley attractor, which is so early degrees of Scorpio for, for anyone or late degrees of um, Libra are really potent because there is a lot of that supra cosmic uh, consciousness um, influence from the Shapley attractor. Um, so it's, it's very magnetic frequency that guides us to the core of our being. What is the true motivation, not just for us, but for others as well. So people who have these placements and certainly when Atlantis will be there, it'll a lot of attention will be uh, pulled towards talking about Atlantean stories, bringing in um, technology uh, that was known and present in Atlantis. People will spontaneously recall their gifts and qualities they used in Atlantis. Um, so it, it you know depends on where you're at with your journey and what your karma or any of the viewers in relation to Atlantis. You may experience it in a, either as very difficult and challenging, and you will be called to ground and breathe through it and bring the light of your um, soul into the the memories, so that you can find peace in whatever was. And for others, it will be just amazing activation um, into their fullest expression. Well, so do you think, Julia, do you think that that also corresponds to the geographical locations where there's been extreme flooding? I believe so, because they are, it's coming, the water is coming from the Atlantic Ocean. And it is believed that the Atlantis um, sunk in that entire area. So I find it's quite peculiar that it was the east coast of states, mm. the waters it's of Atlantis. interesting. I mean, what's also interesting is that there's a lot of people in the, in the area where the hurricanes are most hit, like Sarasota, where they resonate though, interestingly, with um, either Atlantean or else Lemurian energies there. So yes, it's very interesting correlation. Yeah. And as I said, it's inspiring to see how those that are consciously or spiritually awake, how how masterfully they're transmuting the experience, how they're not falling into fear and, and blame, but really just yeah. self-mastery and what's inspiration. The, what, what's one of the most fascinating things you've ever seen in someone's chart or that you've learned from your own exploration of yeah, how the charts stay up? Thank you for such a great question. The magic of synchronicity and the divine alignment when we are seemingly blindly navigating life and creating these uh, pivotal points of rapid transformation, evolution and change where you have like this day where suddenly you are like your life has changed. And when you look back at the transits, you see how much the cosmos was playing its part. And I love um, exploring the asteroids that are calling to the archetypal uh, energy. So there is asteroid, not just for Atlantis, but for anyone interested in Lemuria, Lemurian codes, there's asteroid Hawaii that seem to be really uh, potently connected uh, to that. So see where that plays a role in your chart. You can again find it at the, uh, in the extended selection on the astro.com website. There are asteroids for um, Egyptian deities and seeing that prominent in people's charts also totally makes sense why they navigate towards uh, those stories. So it's just amazing. Do you ever wonder though with the charts, it's a very fascinating, I mean, it's really interesting. Do you ever wonder if it's like a little chicken and egg, like which was mm. created first? Was the chart yeah. created first or is the chart, because everything's reflection, right? Or was, yeah. the, was the chart created first or is the chart being a reflection of the human consciousness, free will, and past and parallel that. times. Yeah, I love that. It's always evolving, right? First of all, the important point is the entry of the soul into the physical incarnation. What's the snapshot of the sky at that point? So that's your that's your musical sheet. That's the very specific sound of your soul. And then as the sky continues to evolve, as you move through space, um, there is, there, there's new music being played in every single moment and whatever is played, is it in resonance with your natal chart or is it in this court? And that's how, why 
that's why people are experiencing different transits at different time for some people this full moon is super powerful and potent because it is hitting um mathematically and geometrically on what's in their natal chart and for others you know just browse through it um but um another point to what you've said for example the asteroids there's this mighty asteroid belt in our solar system that is full of thousands upon thousands of these fractals um, of as what we know as asteroids. And there are many that aren't necessarily named yet, and many are named, thousands of them. But how are they named and how do we determine their meaning? Like of this little piece of rock, we name it Atlantis, and now it is somehow telling us about our connection to Atlantis. But it is it is our consciousness that is creating the impact. Um, I explained uh, to my community at the time when this type of question was um, asked, when when planets are being named or when asteroids are being named, it doesn't just happen. It, the, these objects are being observed by human consciousness, by the observers, the astronomers, for a long period of time. Data is being collected. Um, and then there is a collective decision making about the name and the date is very specifically kind of collectively. There's a lot of consciousness imprint being put on these objects. And then in time as over the thousands of years, astrologers, astronomers, mathematicians pay attention to these objects. We continue infusing more and more uh, codes um, of the energetics of what we know about these different archetypal energies. So it's becoming more and more potent the more people are paying attention. Um, so it's it's a that it's a dance between the cosmos and us, and I feel like there is excitement being built through the. But of course, it's just our um, uh, my perspective of it. How how we can now consciously um, participate in this cosmic dance? How we can pay attention to to the songs and to to the inspiration that is coming to us through these archetypal beings. Um, you know, just in the QHHT sessions, many people regressed to knowing or remembering themselves as a solar being, as um, as a star that was, that was beaming light into cosmos, and they were able to telepathically connect to other star systems, or they regressed to being a planetary being, and that also had its expression and, and meaning. So, you know, universe is mental and it's all consciousness and it's all mm -hmm. fun and play. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answers. That's amazing. Yeah. It's like an endless, infinite <laughs> Pandora's box of its own. Mm -hmm. How would you, how would you advise someone who wanted to learn more about their chart? Obviously you, you gave us some great next steps and, and some yeah. place, some websites, your website, galactic astrology, what might you say to somebody to help support them in navigating? Yeah. I would like to highlight first the importance of recognizing if whether you are the creative, artistic, more right brain focused type of person, then this may feel like upstream path for you. And maybe some you know spiritual uh, path of just going within and following the center uh, of your core is the better option for you uh, because the map is inside our heart we don't need to know these astrological placements in order to fulfill our destiny if we just follow the higher heart um the inner knowing then you know we're fine we can't miss the mark but if you are the someone that loves collecting data and analyzing things and discovering stuff through mental experience then this path will bring you so much joy and excitement. And I have to say that the galactic astrology soul reading, because there is the soul reading element, the divination part of it, it brings the right brain right to it. There is this beautiful coherence between the left and right brain hemisphere uh, in our community. We all we have the artists and we have um, the the researchers too. So just see how you feel about uh, one or the other, but certainly just first maybe starting with the free content on the Galactic Astrology YouTube channel. And if your heart keeps pulling you towards it through excitement and passion, then explore the courses or book your session and, and see where it takes you. You're all different. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think there's so much to learn and unpack there. So, wow, that was that was fabulous, Julia.
Neil, do Thank you want to so add much. anything? It is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would like to ask you another question. You, so you shared about the hidden truths. I think you said something about that this year, a lot of things are coming up to be uncovered, something around, along those lines, right? And that's been a theme for the last, well, definitely the last few years, but this last year, many things are coming up uh, when it comes to celebrities, politicians, the music industry. And just, it seems that much of the entertainment in the world, right? As broad, broad, I'm giving you a broad picture here, is more of an illusion than we even thought. Yeah. Um, and so, so much of this is coming to the service to be healed and dealt with. And you shared some of the alignments that are going on. And it's interesting because, you know, just as you shared, you were going to share things and I was going to have kind of mind blowing experiences, realizing why I'm doing certain things. And Orion has been coming like hardcore mm -hmm. in my life for the last year. And so much so that I'm doing a whole conference, eight hours on Orion in like Amazing. a few months. And um, so I would love for you, like if you could just share more information about what Orion has to do with this. What, is it something that happened there that we're healing? Is that got to do with these truths coming out or what is actually going on with that connection? Yes, very much the echo. So the whatever was unresolved in Orion through, for, through many collective experiences through living in polarity, whatever was unfinished there had to be taken somewhere else if those planetary systems evolved. There were still, there are always people and souls that are not quite ready yet. So another playground is being created um, on different exoplanet. So what was unfinished in Orion was taken to Earth. The echo of that perhaps in the Atlantean times um, first, and then another echo in our current uh, uh, era. So it's all interconnected. And if we go beyond Orion, um, it may have been Lyra. And that is really, coming through so clearly through regression sessions. And I'm sure in the QHHT community, many would have seen. So if, if a client had strong Lyran connection, experienced um, Lyran wars, it's like whatever was there, the refugees moved to other planetary systems. Um, uh -huh, uh -huh. Some ended up in Orion, then the stories were evolving there. Then it moved to Earth, ancient Atlantis. Now we are here again all over uh, but i feel because of everything all the signs everything that the astrology is showing us in, in terms of how much guidance and support there is from the celestial bodies through these archetypes that are coming through into our conscious awareness there is so much mythology that is clearly uh, uh, showing up in our collective human experience um, and th there are placements that even astrologers that are spending decades looking at these uh, things, they're like, oh my God, I've never in my 30, 40, 50 uh, year old career as an astrologer have seen such powerful impact playing out. Like there's something really uh, epic uh, going on. And if we expand the perspective to these other star systems, to me, what I see like that art at the very beginning of the presentation, and from the stories from the regression when people remembered why they came to earth how they will call to earth to support this ascension collective ascension process as i said i believe we are healing karmic um, uh, traumatic experiences yes. uh, anchored in polarity of mm. dense uh, realities and we are called to bring the light and love of the creator into these memories resolve them dissolve them in love and peace integrate all the wisdom that we learned from those experiences and anchor this universal peace in these denser mm -hmm. realities so that there can be a ripple effect perhaps through other star systems where there's a lot of um, suffering too. Um, so yeah. there, are many, there are many souls here that find it really challenging to be in such dense experience, but there are many who has, have done this over and over and over again, many, many times. And there are these um, like, troopers, rock stars like you guys that can hold space for this quantum awareness, understanding of the nuances and complexities and that it essentially it's very simple. We go to the center and bring peace into it, breathe through it, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I, I've been coming to the 
I came to the conclusion, I guess, but it's always never-ending spiral of awareness. But that Earth is almost like a place where, just to be kind of like kind of joking about it, but almost like a galactic trauma mental institute. <laughs> you know, I love that. That, that we've all like because there, there's mantis right. beings there's insectoid beings there's probably cockroach beings there's mm -hmm. all types of beings that have donated dna to earth experience because i'm mm -hmm. not all knowing in this limited body this moment i'm not sure if it's every being in the galaxy but the way it mm -hmm. looks like and the way earth is like a library of i call it the alexander the library of alexandria of dna you know and since it's so much like that it could be that all these species in the mm -hmm. galaxy have well, donated actually, DNA to us. And the ultimate goal is after all these wars yeah. and this harmony we've created is they've sent their best soldiers <laughs> to come down here and learn how to live in peace. And I, I also make it an analogy to, you know, back in the ancient days, like the Trojan War, they would send their best soldier in the front so the rest of them wouldn't have to die. And if one of those people win, then, you know, that team gets victory and it's it's almost like they, we've all come here in order, order to represent the ancestry of all the dna we've connected to and our goal is to get over galactic racism or galactic speciesism to see ourselves in the other and try to figure it all out and as we're doing that so we're not just processing our own karma and trauma we're pro processing it for the collective of the galaxy maybe beyond yeah for yes. sure Thank you for wording that so clearly. And I do want to highlight that the, you know, working with galactic astrology, uh, learning to understand your individual placements and seeing how transits are activating different memories at different times, it, it's a stage. Uh, for some people, it's maybe just a year, for others, several years, decades. But at some point, you realize that, that these are just another labels that you are holding on to. They were helping you to move through certain things. It's really powerful when you suddenly can release the limiting labels of the human experience of what the environment is to be such a limited uh, identity and the galactic labels can help you grow and expand into higher frequency, greater light, really energetically grow massively and start creating a very uh, different reality. But then there's this experience where you just feel like, okay, I'm just being called to the center where, where it's there, there's just um, there's no hierarchy of which star system and star being is better than the other. Oh, I have more galactic placements than you, and it's just uh, it doesn't matter anymore. You just come to the simplicity of holding peace and love and wisdom anchored in the physical human experience, and just doing that. <laughs> um, chopping wood, carry water is what I want to say. <laughs> So it, it's beautifully entertaining, this whole journey, this whole path, and I love it. It just, it, for me, it brings me a lot of joy and excitement to see behind the curtain of, of the creator and receiving the guidance and clarity. But uh, it's important also to take a lot of breaks from that kind of stimuli and just be in nature and be present. And that's just as wonderful. Yeah. What you're saying, so much of what you're saying is really all about how we're shifting from an oligarchy, right? A, a, you know, a system of top down to a system of equanimity to a system of synergy right and i love hearing like what you're saying it's so awesome to, to i also love that you talked about beetlejuice because i think up until very recently people just thought beetlejuice was a movie <laughs> they didn't quite realize like that's a planetary body and i never had that visual i have a good friend a dear friend who's in my inner circle she's she resonates us from Beetlejuice and she's got all the energies. And even when you, when you showed that, that picture, I was like, wow, I never had that awareness before that it was so much larger as a planetary. Like I just, that's not something I Massive. expected. Very cool. Yeah. So I'm right now, I'm right now Jupiter is uh, conjunct this uh, star. So a lot of star seeds that have Beetlejuice in their natal chart can really feel activated. Jupiter is very expansive, like energy. Um, so when we looked at the soul memories of people that have um, Orion stars, whether Bellatrix or Beetlejuice um, connections, they recall themselves being members of, of a collective that was helping others realize how much deception there was in the world um, by power hungry, controlling, 
um, system. So very much the echo of what we are experiencing here on Earth. So there is mm. a huge amount of um, large amount of souls here that are here to kind of repeat what they have done uh, previously in Orion. Uh, so there are many people who are quite savvy at navigating polarity and they feel really passionate about speaking the truth, revealing the dark secrets. And with the uh, placements astrologically that are happening right now, the truth has to be revealed. The time mm -hmm. is up now. The, the karmic bells are ringing. Exactly. So it's quite amazing how collectively we are navigating this together. Yeah. yeah. That is our yeah. seed's story, right? We're here for for those reasons. Yeah. It's a very beautiful yeah. story. It, the whole Orion thing, I just want to keep talking, to be honest, because this is getting even... <laughs> The Orion thing is just like so powerful because so just to kind of give you a summary of my how I got connected to it or how I realized my connection. So when I first woke up, I was all about Arcturus, you know, I'm Arcturian, I'm Arcturian. And I started hearing about how the Arcturians were really good with technology. Yeah. And because I was into tech and computers and then when I started doing webinars, I'm like, I'm the master webinar Arcturian, you know. <laughs> and so I was, I was super into, you know, the technology, that mental thing. Then I started realizing that we're all that is. We've been everything, and um, many times, many times, specific themes are more relevant to this experience now. I think Dolores Cannon even shared about that, like specific themes. So you might have had like multiple lives in Pleiades, but only a couple in Arcturus. But the theme of what happened in Arcturus is relevant now. So then I, I never really thought of Orion, and you know, you you never hear of Orion star seeds, right? You hear of Lyran star seeds, Andromeda star seeds, Arcturian star seeds. So and all I ever heard of was the Orion Wars. So I had mm -hmm. two passive regressions. Bridget Rennie Holiday, who's in the room right now, she gave me one of them, QHHT as well. And, um, and then some, um, some plant medicine ceremonies where all these dots were connected. And I saw myself in a, on Orion. And I was, um, long story short, because there was many different experiences, but in one of them, I'm standing by this portal on the middle star of Orion. And you know the guy in Thor that's the Rainbow Bridge gatekeeper on Thor? That was me. I was holding this, like, staff. I was protecting the portal. And um, it, sometime in the future, generations later, we wow. got overpowered. Um, and the creator god technology from the nebula, which was the technology to create life and stars, was stolen. And we were overpowered in a war. And I saw the war take place. And my Stargate was taken over, which was the largest Stargate on the, in the whole system. And they escaped through the portal. Mm. And the nickname of this portal was called the Portal to Descension. Wow. And, That's yeah. So and and after, after all the, um, they left, we changed the portal into a portal jump room where it was a job that you could get to jump through that portal to regain the technology. And after that mission failed, we went through the portal and got stuck on Earth. That was the whole thing that I received there, you wow. know, so they what I got was they took this and they created a lot of trauma in that reality in Orion and they escaped through the portal onto Earth, but they forgot Well, they didn't realize because they were so arrogant that they were going to forget who they were and they came to Earth and they fell into the amnesia process and started living out the same karmic cycle, but with amnesia of why they're even doing it in the first place. Wow, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, you've uh, have you had a look at your natal placements and see if Orion is configuring in your natal chart? Not, I don't it. think so. I've, I got my astrology done a few times, but I haven't asked about that. Do you know yeah. where your north node is? No, I don't. Do you know if you have anything in Gemini? Your child should never Oops. be posted on the internet. I've always felt okay. That was a random video. Um, <laughs> I do not know. I do not know. That's okay. Well, you can go to the website and see. But um, really, it's it's the the transits, the Jupiter and Gemini right now. That, that is. Um, what would you say to cool. somebody? Sorry, Julia. What would you say to someone who has their North Node and Jupiter in Gemini? That, I have uh, North Node and my Jupiter in Gemini. Very good. Yeah. So it, <laughs> not all thirty degrees of Gemini con conjunct some Orion stars, but if Orion. Um, stars are conjunct or opposing well if gemini then it will be conjunction it's likely that you also lived in orion on orion <laughs> in orion and yeah. no surprise that you're here at this time doing this very particular work, work helping 
uh, with the ascension process. Mm -hmm. And I wonder um, if we met each other in Orion uh, <laughs> too, because I have Orion quite active in my chart. So I'm actually not surprised Neil, uh, how our how our connection was delayed until now, when these energies are quite potent. So it makes sense that we're here together this time. So it's divine yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Here with you. Mm -hmm. I will say, I loved also that you wove in the DNA aspect because I know from like the DNA is such a huge piece of it is, is all of this stuff is coded into our DNA, all of it. And it can all be awakened yeah. and there's no one who can't find it. That's what's so brilliant is the, the, yeah. the whole design of our reality is like no one can keep that from you, you know? Yeah, thank you for mentioning that. I was actually curious about, can we track our bloodline through galactics and surprise, surprise, of course we can. So for example, if, if you take it, well, I took a DNA swab and looked at my lineage. So I have the Nordic leg uh, of my ancestors and the um, South um, European uh, leg. So I, the, the Nordic connection is my Pleiadian connection, which is prominent in my chart and also through my mother's lineage. Like there, there's Pleiadian conjunctions throughout for many generations. Um, and for example, my husband, he doesn't have the Nordic DNA. Uh, he also took the DNA test. He only has the towards Greece and South uh, and he doesn't have the Pleiades in his chart as an example. And there are many other uh, stories like that throughout our community where you can wow. see certain lineages in your chart. Yeah. So can everybody through their bloodline see that? Well, you do your bloodline and then you have a map of the world and you see how far and where your ancestors go. I wanted to know if I have Irish ancestors, but no, but maybe some um, um, Nordic Viking DNA at some point floated over uh, because I, I feel so at home uh, here in Ireland, but perhaps just through the past life experiences. But so you would, you want to see where your position in the world and then you kind of need to know which galactic star system seeded uh, a certain human uh, population in certain places. So we would know that Pleiadian DNA will come from the Nordics, but we also see it in Japan. We also see it in Hawaii, you know. Um, the, um, the Arcturians, you would see that yes, throughout, right. throughout um, Middle Europe, uh, Italy will feel strong there. The Syrians uh -huh. would come through Africa, um, the Alpha Centaurians, a lot of the North American and the connection to, to Telos, the inner earth, people who have Alpha Centauri in their chart, they usually feel strong connection to the inner earth people and the, um, the lineage there. Uh, there's more, I talk about it in the course, it's been a while when I looked at and that. I'm, I'm curious if the soul is a specific, its own um, heritage than the physical body. I believe they work together. Like if if I have a soul experience of certain uh, trauma or density that is now attached to my soul, I will only be able through law of attraction be born into human lineage that has very simi similar imprint energetically and frequency energetically. So you are, it's, there has to be a frequency match um, to what you're born into physically. You know what I mean? So when you're healing your soul memories from other star systems, you're actually also healing the, the human lineage that has very similar stories in terms of what emotions were, were lived through. There's always a soul. There always, there always has to be a vibrational match. Yes. You can't incarnate into something that you're not a vibrational match for, which is why also it's so important at this time to clear and resolve karma because we we often think about the incarnational experience this lifetime meaning as the most important thing there is you have one life but in reality the work that you do any person in this incarnation is what supports and assists you in your infinite journey because yes. we're all infinite beings so to the degree that you can resolve karmic issues and karma is never a punishment it's the traumas that's what we were talking about. It's traumas that you came in with from your other incarnation experiences to the de degree that you can resolve those, you get freed from them so that your future incarnation experiences or whatever you may choose 
doesn't imprint so that when you, because as an infant being, you're, you're traversing time, space, reality. Yeah. Karma to me, what I'm hearing now is like a record of unresolved dense yes. emotions that yes. want to come through to be cleared so that peace and harmony can be restored. Yeah. And not just wow. unresolved emotions, but unresolved issues of any kind. It could be relational, really? it could mm -hmm. be financial, right? It could be, you know, and yes, you have emotional experiences around that for sure, but it could be anything. It could even be like you could have held some kind of judgment or resentment. Right, that's relational and ultimately yeah. it's all this stuff. It's all of it. Yeah, what I'm, what I'm seeing now is, um, um, you know, if anyone ever listens to people who have near death experience who were on the other side and who were and also through past life regressions when you get to a moment before you're planning your incarnation and you start deciding what will you put on into your cart what kind of experiences um it's it's challenging because when you're in the non um if you're in higher density you don't realize that the the difficult emotional states that you're agreeing to experience experiencing on earth are not just that split second when you're picking them from the whole variety you're actually going to live them for long periods of time it's like a, it's like a little secret that they don't um, really <laughs> elaborate on on the other side but when you when you look at your astrological chart it can help you uh, remember what is it that you decided on for this journey what 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 is the what are the main themes that you're here to explore and what uh, ancestral energetics are you here help to help clearing which star systems are you best at helping to heal clear integrate um embody like that there's just so much guidance there and it's so wonderful to, yeah. to work with it if that's something that it is so true once you get in touch with your your potential to affect the dna you I mean, we've been doing this for years where we're like healing the bloodlines through through the, the lineages of DNA. And I am so certain that that's part of what's contributing to this massive shift. Yeah. It's not the only thing, of course. It's, it's becoming like, easier and oh. easier for, for people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. that's brilliant. Yeah, I think the, yeah. the collective healing prayers are really, really potent at this time because really that's what we are here to do, the universal healing so yeah. Thank you all for doing and the all other this. thing too is just that in the DNA, what's so great about re referencing all the different galactic origins here is that I happen to I happen to be of that of that consciousness that says you've got it all. You've got it all. It's that you're you're claiming where you're most resonant with. Yes. You're claiming what's going to serve your soul's agenda. And your soul's, you know, divine purpose for being here at this time, but really, there's nothing you can't tap into, right? I remember I had a, I had a um, first contact experience, and I was so like dismayed that there were like all these like ugly looking beings. <laughs> remember, there were like reptilians, there were insectoids, there was all kinds, and I was like, it took me quite a few regressions to make peace with that some of that right and to realize like oh this is just all about the the universality the multi-dimensionality of all the different aspects that are in my dna bloodlines from all the different realms of what i was here to bring forward right and everybody has that there's not like there's that, that's something we can all discover right that's part of what you're helping people to do yes Love that. Awesome. Very cool. beautiful. Julia, thank you so much. I do have one more question though, if we can close it on this one. I'm curious if you have any, um, you know, since you you do QHHT or you did and you followed Dolores Cannon, you know, she spoke about the, the first nuclear bomb that, um, you know, went off and how there was a call out to the universe after this and all these souls rushed in, right? And also, I, I, I believe it was her, but it's so long ago that I read this. I don't know if it was something related to her or if it was Dolores said that many souls were incarnating the specific bloodlines up until that moment. And then after that, many rules of incarnational experiences basically went out the door because it was like 
just come in and save everyone. In all your experiences, your QHHT and galactic astrology, what's your take on um, nuclear energy, extraterrestrials, and souls incarnating since then? Yeah, what I'm seeing is this hybridization where there is, what I've witnessed is this infinite variety of the potentials that it's really hard to to share a story as something that is a pattern for for many many others because i'm seeing uh really dense heavy bloodlines that have dark magic um for so many generations and then bright light souls with a lot of um, spiritual stars coming through to hijack that bloodline but what I'm also seeing is really bright, uh, light uh, bloodlines with a lot of spiritual stars uh, who can have this darker soul that now wants to be influenced, impacted by, well, there may be a plan to hijack it, but it is actually for, for evolution. I believe everything is for evolution, collect, collective, universal evolution. So, and I believe the greatest force is the evolutionary force guiding us towards greater connectivity, greater harmony consciously. So in that sense, at this point, because we are in the age where there is this greater connectivity and kind of quantum awareness becoming more and more natural for all of us, it's easier for these rules to become more um, loose and the souls that are coming through now are these rock stars that are able to navigate this type of experience. So again, there has to be a frequency match for whoever comes in. And there is always this order. <laughs> there is there is order uh, in, in how it's done. But it's just very complex to me. It feels like Earth is this infinite potential. There is there's there's such a variety of universal cosmic energies in. So what a playground. Wow. wow. What an intricate tapestry of creation that is taking place here. Mm. It's beautiful. Yeah. Julia, thank like you so say, much. I, I do yeah, want to ahead. say that uh, with, um, with Neptune in Pisces right now, there is mm -hmm. a lot of, there can be a lot of escapism um, uh, happening and addictions happening in very subtle levels for many of us, including this could be a form of uh, escapism. And I just want to highlight how important it is to, mm -hmm to make sure that we that we don't get sidetracked from what is important in our everyday experience with our everyday relationships presence with the people who are next to us with us whether it's the family or someone we meet randomly on the street uh, where where the real work should be happening um so kind of just wanted to yeah. mention that yeah thank you for sharing that and yeah, a lot of distractions. This is coming from a person who used a lot of distractions in his whole life. And what, so what would you say is maybe you can leave us on what is a good way to not escape, but to sit and to feel what we, what we should basically so that we can really process what's coming up for us instead of looking for things to take us away from really feeling what's happening. Yeah, as you kind of answered it in the question, to sit and to feel and the inner inquiry and allowing for the inner conversation to what is it really that that is present and that is arising and can I allow that to be good enough exactly as it is? Um, or what I was about to do in a form of my addiction, um, why am I doing that? What is it that I'm avoiding? Um, and again, astrology can be so wonderful at guiding us in these experiences. It, there is a lot of unconscious happening that we kind of just go with the flow and things happen to us. But when you learn how to understand this language of universe, you can become consciously aware and guided through the experiences. Um, and again, if there are people who are very self-reflective, they, they don't really need to study all these things. But if you're stuck, then becoming unstuck can be easier with something like this. This when does Neptune move into Aquarius, uh, into Aries? Because it's been in Pisces for quite a while, a long time. Yeah, next year, a spring next year, I believe. Um, what do you think? What do you actually, think? I will go back to Pisces for a little bit uh, afterwards. So, um, what do you think that's going to have an effect? Because Aries is like the higher I am. Well, how do you think Neptune in 
Yeah, I don't I know we were just yeah, happy, yeah. so I didn't need to ask you another question. I just so when Neptune is, is in high degrees of Pisces and, and Pluto is in high degrees uh, and Uranus is in high degrees, right now we are all going through these like culmination of the endings of cycles. And we are talking many cycles. It feels like infinite uh, fractal um, experience of, as we said, reflecting on childhood, past lives on Earth, Atlantis, Orion, Lyra, and so on. Um, so ending of cycles. And we're really facing the shadow collectively, big time. And we are asked to bring the light um, of wisdom and peace and love, acceptance into it, to heal it. And so then when Neptune goes into Aries, um, and as these uh, long-term transit planets shift signs and go into the early degrees of new signs, that it'll feel like a new beginning. It'll feel lighter, clearer, but we will really be asked to step into the self-mastery more consciously and more publicly, um, you know, being the leaders and guides in our individual lives, whether online or in our in our immediate environment, but it'll feel like a new beginning, like a new cycle is starting. And what can we go create now that we know all that we know and how to navigate next? Fascinating. There'll be rapid expansion. There'll be just it'll it'll be quantum expansion of collective consciousness. Everything will change. I feel. Uh, 2026 20, and onwards, a whole decade where I, I believe books will have to be rewritten in terms of the school curriculum um, and how we oh, operate. So. Astrology is kind of pointing to that. Ten, a decade of just immense expansion. And we remember in Atlantis, there was this rapid expansion too, but not enough growth in the heart space. And we really, really, really need to. Uh, remember that and, and speak about the importance of the heart and the grounding and the earth and like being in the presence rather than just advancing the mind which mm -hmm. a portion of humanity most likely will do that but can we hold space to anchor it um in a balanced way do you feel that coming yes. i feel a huge shift coming and this is from someone that was never about predicting future dates, you know, uh, because so many people made predictions before, but there, there are some shifts going on. And even with what's happening with disclosure with Congress and everything, and even though there's a lot of disinfo, misinfo out there, it's inevitable at this point that, um, yeah. that it's coming out that we're a part of a galactic community. Things are shifting on the planet. There's even, we'll get into this over the next few days, but even one of this, uh, a CIA whistleblower came out a few months ago and when they were talking about congressional disclosure and said the memo got out to the government that they're going to make themselves known in 2027 and they got to get the crap together you know and mm -hmm. that was his tweet and um not to rely only on that but many other things that are occurring and we're in the time of the quickening and before we know it the world as we know it could shift and change and it's truly up to us but as the world is shifting what really counts is if we're at a place where we're at peace with ourselves because we're not going to create peace in the space and uh, with everybody else unless we find that. And part of that is also seeing ourselves in those that we've considered to be those that have hurt us, you know, or mm -hmm. are doing what people may consider evil. So the work is increasing. I, I feel like, I feel like I like to do the analogy that if we were, uh, if we were rotating around a black hole and that 100, 200 years ago, we we're at the end of the black hole. It would take multiple lives to have the same experience. We're now at the event horizon and we're rotating at the event horizon so fast that we're smacked in the face every single day with the same lessons. <laughs> and we're, a lot of us aren't even listening to it. It's like, mm -hmm. and, and the reason why the chaos is so rapid right now, not because of all the stimulation and the distractions, which is part of it, but also because we cannot take our baggage into the next dimension with us. Mm -hmm. It needs to be processed, right? Yeah, I'm not sure if you are aware that the Vatican Library is being um, scanned into digital format and really available to public. That they are halfway through that process. Yeah, really, uh, In Robert, very Robert interesting. Edward Grant, um, Robert Edward Grant, who received um, keys yeah, to, there. to 
to the library so that he that. can decode whatever they want to be decoded. He mentioned that her on he he commented it publicly that he heard it firsthand from people that are involved in the process yeah. that this is an ongoing process and that the records of human history through human history are due to be like there is a date on when it's wow will be. yeah yeah mm. it's time to let the truth be set free mm. epic times yeah. mm -hmm. that was the first time i heard any you say neil that in that there was a, a recent um disclosure person said that that the that there was a memo like that that there yeah. would be ships by 2027 landing yeah Mm -hmm. Because the collective in my within the collective that I bring through, there's a sub collective called the fleet, and the fleet are beings mm -hmm. that are you know star family races, and they're they really are ready to land. They're saying they're for those of us who want to move to other planets, if we're ready for that option, that will be available for humans this lifetime, within our mm -hmm. lifetime. But they, they, they're they not landing. What they've shared is that they're not landing. Yeah, I believe it in our lifetime, absolutely. Yeah, but they're just not going to land until humans have enough discernment to really yeah. understand, to really understand, number one, the benevolent, in, the benevolent intentions mm -hmm. and to no longer stir up. They're saying that it's humans who are stirring up drama around negative alien agendas that negative aliens mm -hmm. have for the most part been kicked out of this this quadrant where we are but that's not I believe that can only come after i believe that can only come after the religious dogma will come clean with how much of extraterrestrial information is yeah. in um in the box right and it's amazing right, right. to see um this work of um paul wallace that this gentleman's yeah, name. Yeah, he's going to be on here. He's one of my favorite guys. I love him. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. exciting. Mm -hmm. So, it's yeah. my well, it's also really cool that um, recently Pope Francis said he acknowledged other religions. Yes, I saw that. Mm. That was a big, that, that's pretty big, right? And even some people in the Roman Catholic faith are, so, you know, calling it blasphemy, right? <laughs> but that's an indication. So, it's definitely, I mean, even the congressional hearings, if you listen to the Congress members, but not just the congressional hearings and disclosure, but you listen to them on the podcast, because I basically listen to almost all of the congressional members and politicians that go on podcasts about disclosure. And most of these individuals, you know, this is Democrats and Republicans, but definitely a lot of Republicans, and they are fundamental Christians, okay? Um, some of them are hardcore. And they are literally saying, that they're figuring out that the Bible is about UFOs. And <laughs> they, one of them, one of them, yeah. like, and he's still Christian, you know, even, even like whatever you want to believe about him, but even Tucker Carlson, when he does UFO information, he is actually still hardcore Christian, but he's literally saying like, oh, well, now I'm figuring out that some of these things could have been UFOs. And um, one of them said that referred to the keys of, um, to the book of Enoch, and the wheel of Enoch, because if you really read the um, the book of Enoch, he's been taken off on a craft that he's like, I have no idea where I am. And then within an instant second, he's on the other side of the world. And then he's outside the planet looking down at the planet. And congressional members are having discussions about that story on podcasts. I love that, right? that's brilliant. This so it's happening become... now, it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. it's exciting. All right. Beautiful. So, Julia, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you coming on. And I'm excited because, you know, I knew a little bit about you and now I got to experience you more fully. And I'm excited to work with you a lot more. You're amazing. Likewise. Much love to all the viewers. Thank you so much for being here with us.